I'm right back and and Rudez Kalbodama Gadachi have you. It is a great honor and pleasure to be with you here today. Uh, as Maria said, uh, I'm approaching three months uh, into this job, so to be described as one of Wales's leading finance professionals, uh, I was sort of looking around, uh, wondering who she meant, uh, but apparently it's me. Um, and so as the new Auditor General for Wales, I really have been looking forward uh, to this event. This conference is an integral part of a scheme to strengthen the public finance profession in Wales and to secure its future. And when I say future, of course, uh, I mean you, because without wanting to sound like Whitney Houston, uh, you are the future. Uh, and so it's an inspiration for me to see so many people uh, in this room today, 170 of you, as Maria said, uh, committing yourselves to a career in public service. You're starting out in a sector that is challenging and tough, uh, but one that is absolutely crucial in contributing uh, to a better society in Wales. You're at the very heart of the system. The Finance Skills Development Group are committed to giving you the very best start uh, so that you're well placed to help build the better Wales that we all strive for. To do it well, you need to work with knowledge, integrity, passion, and some of that we can teach you and can nurture in you. But most of it, frankly, will come down to you as individuals. So I want to make a challenge to you today uh, to seize all the opportunities that come your way. Soak up the information presented to you, not just today at this conference, but throughout your career. Learn about the environment uh, in which you're operating and use all of that to shape the part that you can play. And in the first few months uh, for me in this role, that's a challenge I'm setting for myself as well. As Auditor General, I might be uh, a fair few years ahead of you along the career uh, path, uh, but we really do have a lot in common as you start on your journey in the world of public finance because, as you know, so do I. I'm starting an eight-year term as the head of the public spending watchdog for Wales, but I have no experience prior to this of working in accountancy or in audit. I hope that I have an awful lot to contribute, but I certainly know that I have an awful lot to learn as well. So I'm trying to build my knowledge uh, every day as I work with colleagues uh, at the Wales Audit Office, as I meet chief executives uh, across the country in the health sector, in local government, in central government, and as I soak up the information and data presented to me, and as I try to work out where best I should focus my particular effort. So I am doing exactly what you're doing, and that's the thing, really, that uh, the process of learning never stops. Uh, whatever job you're in, Whatever project you're given, this process doesn't end just when you attain your professional qualification. And anyone who thinks that they've mastered it all and has nothing left to learn, uh, believe me, they have almost certainly reached the end point of their own career development. The job I now have has to be one of the best in Wales. Uh, I pinch myself uh, every day when I think uh, about it. It's, it's exciting from a personal and professional perspective, and I'm really looking forward to building on the achievements of my predecessor, Hugh Vaughan Thomas, who I know that many of you uh, will already have met. Had you asked me earlier in my career if I might stand before you today as the Auditor General, I'd have laughed, uh, frankly. Uh, but today, as I look back, I, 
I can identify the experiences, uh, the people and the influences that have helped me to this point. My own career path has focused largely on parliamentary democracy. So I started my career in Westminster in the House of Commons uh, before helping to set up the uh, then new National Assembly for Wales and serving in a number of positions in that institution. But one of the most significant experiences uh, I have had during my career that has really helped to widen my perspective and hone my skills has been through secondment to work to support parliaments and political institutions elsewhere in the world. And so for that reason, I'm a huge fan of secondments, and I'm delighted uh, to uh, hear that many of you will be undertaking uh, secondments as part of your uh, program. It's great to see the Financial Skills Development Group placing such an emphasis uh, on the benefits of reciprocal secondment. So if you're a trainee at a health board, uh, you might get to spend some time working in the Welsh Government. If you're uh, working for a council, you might spend some time on placement with the police and so on. And all of that makes your experience uh, richer and you can take learning back to your home organisation so that they benefit too. It's about widening your experience, maximising your potential and I really do love that. I spend a lot of my time on secondment uh, in countries in the Middle East and North Africa, uh, places uh, such as Sudan, Egypt, Iraq, helping them to develop their own political institutions. These are some of the most challenging political environments that you'll find anywhere on earth. Uh, but even though their social, uh, political, cultural uh, aspects are very, very different to our own. The challenges and opportunities that they face uh, can be remarkably similar. In Iraq, for instance, uh, there is an established program of decentralization uh, in government. So the governorate of Basra, which serves a population of around three million people, uh, is grappling with the federal government in Baghdad over its funding, over the boundaries of their devolution settlement. There are different political parties in control in Baghdad and Basra. <coughs> there are constraints on the local political and administrative capacity, and there is public cynicism about the political system. Now, if you swap London and Cardiff for Baghdad and Basra, it all sounds remarkably familiar. And so whilst I was able to take my experience uh, and knowledge to help uh, people elsewhere in the world, at the same time, I learned things uh, that I would never have learned uh, had I not looked outside my uh, workplace. So secondments help you grow as a person uh, as well as developing your technical skills. They'll help you learn a lot about your, yourself or about a different organizational culture or a new kind of leadership. It might not be straight away that you put that learning into practice, but I promise you, uh, you will pick things up of value that further that down the line, you find yourself applying uh, in real time. The fact that I'm standing here today in front of you as Auditor General illustrates that there are many different paths uh, to a career in finance. So I am particularly delighted uh, that for the first time this year, I understand we have a group of apprentices in the room. Some who've decided to pursue a career in finance without following the more traditional path of going to university first. Apprenticeship is a fantastic way uh, to gain skills and experience on the job, at the same time getting qualified as you go without needing to spend three or four years at a higher education institution. Uh, I understand that a number of public bodies uh, are starting to recruit apprentices to join their finance teams, 
And it's great to see the profession diversifying and realizing that there need no longer be just one single path of entry. At the WAO, uh, we've recently taken on six apprentices, all of whom uh, I believe are here today. So hello to Jordan, Rhys, Lewis, Emma, Rachel, and Richard. Uh, I really do wish you the very best as you start out on your journey with us. And it will be an interesting journey. The pace of change over the next few years uh, shows no sign of slowing. My appointment in this role is for eight years. And if I look back over the last eight years, life now seems unrecognizable in many ways. The economic picture, uh, the global political landscape has changed massively. And along with the explosion of social media and new forms of communication. So who knows what it will be like in another eight years uh, when I uh, cease this tenure. And how, in particular, will societal change and technological advance affect the world of public finance? In the WAO, we are investing uh, in data analytics, which opens up possibilities for greater efficiencies, for smarter ways of working, more meaningful insight about public spending and the impact of decisions made. That sort of technological advance coupled with developments in artificial intelligence and remote working capabilities could fundamentally transform the way uh, that we work over the next few years. And as Auditor General, I want to equip you for that environment and support and encourage you to embrace change, however it manifests itself. I want to support transformation in the wider public sector by sharing examples of what's working well and shining a light on things that could improve. My predecessor talked a lot about encouraging the public sector to take well-managed risks. And that's a mantra uh, I also subscribe to, uh, particularly when the world is changing so quickly. Where we need to experiment and we're challenging the norms and exploring new ideas and ways of working is key to our success. When I joined the Wales Audit Office in July, it became apparent very quickly that it is an organization uh, that is really keen to transform and to keep pace with that external environment. Hugh Thomas, before he retired, had launched a number of transformation projects looking at how the organization can better use data and technology, how it can transform the way it communicates with the outside world, and exploring how it can adapt uh, to new ways of working. And I know that many organizations represented here today are doing exactly the same. So this morning we will focus on some of those changes, the key topics and issues we think are important for you to explore. Looking, for example, at what public services might look like in 2025, sustainable procurement, good governance, fraud, and the future of local government. So I hope today is very much about inspiring you, informing you, and equipping you with knowledge about the world of public finance that you are entering. Uh, but it really isn't just about the technical stuff. It's also about shining a light on you as a person and giving you some space for self-reflection and self-awareness. So later today, we will switch the focus onto you as individuals. We'll hear from a panel of former trainees uh, who will share their experiences and give you advice on how to manage your career and take uh, the next steps. We'll look at leadership skills, how to communicate with others to influence and persuade. We'll look, too, at emotional resilience and hear firsthand uh, from a former trainee about her personal struggle with mental health challenges. Learning how to take care of your own health and well-being is really important in a world that is increasingly complex and challenging. It's great to have a job that is 
stimulating and stretching. But please never forget to look after yourselves as well. Protect time for yourself and for the people or activities that help you re-energize. We often talk about soft skills uh, as though they're somehow not as important as the hard stuff. Uh, but for me, they are just important, if not more so. Uh, you're starting out uh, on a very professionally based career. Uh, uh, and I really want you to have this in your minds from the start. Because your success, to some degree, is about passing your exams and getting qualified. But to be a real success in what you do uh, later in your careers, you need to place a lot of emphasis on other areas as well. Your people skills, your social and communication skills. Because most of the time, it's not what you do, it's how you do it that takes you from being good to being great. I've never been an auditor, and now I'm the Auditor General for Wales. So it's the other skills that I've developed, critical thinking, uh, my analytical research skills, emotional intelligence, my leadership credentials, uh, that must have helped me to get here. I'd also encourage you to look for jobs that interest and excite you, even if you think you might not be the obvious uh, choice. Take yourself out of your comfort zone. I certainly did when I applied for this job. Also, it's important to seek help. Uh, look for help, support, and guidance from others. It's never a weakness to ask for help and advice. Uh, I do it on an hourly basis <laughs> at the moment. It's, uh, it, over the years, I have benefited enormously from some fantastic coaches, uh, mentors, colleagues, uh, role models who have helped me uh, along my career. And one ready-made network that you have uh, are the people in this room. So please make the most of your training network to build up and support each other. I'm seeing for myself at the WAO the amazing difference that young and new people bring to an organization. Uh, it shifts culture and unlocks uh, leadership potential and the energy and enthusiasm of new starters challenges the status quo and any sensible organization uh, will be looking to capitalize on that energy. I've talked about the scale of change we face in the public sector and it's my job to lead my organization through that. But I promise you uh, this particular 53-year-old man uh, does not have all the answers he needs to be able to do that. I need people like you uh, to help me take the decisions that are right for the next 10 years, uh, not the last. So as I said at the beginning, you are the senior public sector leaders of the future. So if you haven't already, please start that leadership journey uh, today. Think about how you can start to influence the leadership and the organizations in which you work as a whole. Speak up in your workplaces. Make your views and opinions known uh, and it will boost your profile and boost your confidence uh, and help you grow in your careers. And more importantly still, it will improve the performance of the public service organizations in which you are based and so help Wales become a better place. So I'd go back to wondering what the next eight years uh, brings, the next eight years when I cease in this role. What will the global political and economic landscape look like? How will Welsh public services be performing? What will I have achieved in office and what will I do next? And where will you be? If you're not thinking about these things right now, then you really should be. Because uh, uh, as George Bernard Shaw said, life isn't about finding yourself, life is about creating yourself. 
Joachim Rando Boroma, Moin Hoch, Adurnod. I thank you very much indeed for listening, and I really do hope you enjoy today and get an awful lot from it. Joachim Fahr.